So I've had a few people request that I share what apps I use on my personal device, which is a Google Pixel 6 running Graphene OS. So that is what I'll be sharing today. And please keep in mind, these are my personal recommendations. Take them with a grain of salt. As recommendations do, they change over time. Some people might call that flip-flopping or whatever you want to call it, but the fields of privacy and security are always changing. What's the best today might not be the best a year from now. So I'm going to go through my apps line by line and give you some background on why I chose them. Again, the apps that I chose, they're not perfect, but it's what works for me at this current time. I also have my device in airplane mode just to avoid any phone calls or notifications while I'm recording this. So not going to lie, feels a little bit dirty sharing my personal phone screen like this on YouTube, but hopefully you can get some value out of this and you find it useful. So the first one you're going to see is 1Password, and from a privacy perspective, this is not ideal. It's all stored in the cloud on their servers. I've researched the app a lot. I do like them overall as a company and what they do to implement and their security measures. But the main reason I use this is it has a great user interface. It's easy to use, integration works really well. And it works so well that I actually got my parents to use it. And honestly, that's a bigger win for me than hosting some password database locally. So for my threat model, it's a much greater chance that my parents' accounts get compromised because they use the dog's name along with the year they were born as a password on every single account. So the fact that I got them to use a password manager makes me feel a lot better. And for my threat model, this is what works. Aegis is an open source app that I use to store one-time passcodes, works well. Antennapod is an open source podcast subscription app, so I use that to track all my subscriptions and listen to podcasts, works great. Apps, that's just the Graphene OS App Store, Auditor, another default app that comes on Graphene OS. Aurora Store is what I use on my main owner profile instead of the Google Play Store. I don't have Google Play services installed on this user profile. Calculator, because, well, math is hard. The calendar app, I use Simple Calendar Pro, which is another open source app, works great. That in integrates with another app I'm going to be covering shortly, so that just displays all my calendar events. That's the default Graphene OS camera app. Clock, another default app. Onto line three, Contacts, that's another default app on the phone. DevX5, this is an app that I use to sync up with my next cloud instance where I have a CalDev and CardDev server, which is where I store my contacts and calendar events. So DevX ties into there and syncs those contacts and calendar events on my phone so that Simple Calendar Pro can display it and the Contacts app can display my contacts. If you're interested in learning more about how I store my calendar and contacts, I'll link some videos down below I made about how to store your contacts and calendar events in the cloud and how to set that up on your device. Next, Files and Gallery, those are both default apps on the device. Magic Earth, that's what I use for any GPS or navigation I need for driving directions. I do want to test some other apps in the future, just haven't got around to it yet. Magic Earth works well so far, so that's what I continue to use. On to the next line, uh, this first app, Malved VPN. I don't want to get into the game of recommending VPN services, but Malved is what I use after doing all the research. I like them, but VPN recommendations, I'm going to stay away from that. It's a very personal choice, so research, make your personal choice, and choose what you think is best. Nextcloud, as I alluded to earlier, I have a Nextcloud server at my house on my NAS, which I'll be covering in a future video. So on there I store my files, contacts, calendar events, different things like that. The Nextcloud app just lets me access that from anywhere, so it's pretty convenient. OpenVPN is what I use to access my house remotely. I have an OpenVPN server running on my PFSense firewall, so that's what I use to connect in. PDF Viewer, another default app. Phone, another default app. Now on the next line I have the Plex Player app. Um, Plex is a media streaming server. That's where I store files. And that's about all I'm gonna say about Plex. Redo is the RSS reader that I use to manually track for app updates instead of using F-Droid. I made some videos on this topic previously, which I'll link down below if you're interested in learning more. Settings app, another default app. So Signal is the secure messaging app that I use. And in addition to using Signal for secure messages, it also has the ability to be your default SMS app on your phone. So I also have it set up to be that. So I disabled the built-in messaging app on my device. My theory on apps is the less apps you use, the better. It minimizes your attack surface and also the number of third parties that you need to trust. So the Sonos app, as I mentioned, I'm not perfect. I have a wireless speaker in my home, but I will point out it does not have a microphone built in. So I guess you could say it's not a smart speaker. I don't know, I can stream music over Wi-Fi, so maybe it's a smart speaker. I don't know. I haven't really found a better option yet. It works really well, and I don't feel like connecting a 30-foot-long aux cable from my phone to my speaker, so I like the wireless streaming. So keeping with the theme of not being perfect, I also have a Spotify subscription, so that's how I stream music. Haven't really found any other great options at this point, but works really well. I like it, so I use it. 
Sync Thing is a great app. That's an app I use to back up my photos to my computer, syncs them all in the background. Hope to cover that in a future video. It's a great app, you should check it out. Todoist is a cloud app I use to manage my different tasks. I'm looking to move away from that to something local based, just haven't got around to it yet. And these last two, Unify Network and Unify Protect. I use Unify Networking Gear in my house. So the Unify Networking app allows me to manage my switch and access point. Unify Protect, I have PoE cameras that record data locally on a NVR or network video recorder that I have. So the Unify Protect app just lets me see those cameras remotely. So that brings us to the last line of apps on my owner profile. The first one here is Uptime Robot. I use that to monitor my website and some other services for outages. So I'm gonna skip Vanadium for a moment. And the last app on this line is Geometric Weather. And while I could just check the weather in the browser on my phone, I'm a sucker for nice animations and Geometric Weather has some nice animations. So now back to Vanadium. And as I mentioned in the intro, recommendations change over time. I used to recommend Bromite, but recently between Chromium versions 102 and 103, Bromite was about three weeks behind in actually getting the build out and the update rolled out, which means that the browser was missing out on important security updates for about three weeks. And if you do use Bromite, you may have seen this warning the Bromite devs added because they understand the issue of it. So as of the time of this recording, Bromite is up to date at version 103. But during that three week time period, I was getting a bit hesitant to continue using it. So I thought it was as good of a time as any to try out Vanadium and see how it was. So out of the box, Vanadium doesn't come with an ad blocking option. So instead I'm using the secure DNS option to use DNS over HTTPS. And I'm using a DNS server that supports ad blocking. So ads are now being blocked at the network layer. I'm using the Malved DNS server that blocks ads. Again, not giving any recommendations, just the first one that I came across, so that's what I use. The setup has been working great, so I don't see myself going back to Bromite anytime in the near future. So that now brings us to my burner profile, which is my second user profile that I have set up. So on this profile, I have apps that require Google Play services and also apps that I'm trying to minimize my usage on, which you'll see shortly. So on the first line, we have two default apps, Apps and Auditor. The next one is Briar. I don't actually use this on a day-to-day -day basis. I just have it installed because I'm testing it out. Burner is an app that allows you to get VoIP numbers, which you can then you know, burn if you don't want them anymore and recycle them and get a new burner number. So if you saw my previous video where I called the scammer, I used the burner app to get a VoIP number so I didn't use my actual cell phone number or have to get a SIM card and put that in the phone and swap that out if I want a different number. So again, I wouldn't personally recommend this app, but it's the cheapest VoIP service that I found and easy to use, so that's what I continue to use. Calculator, another default app. On the next line, we have the Graphene OS default camera app along with the Google Play camera app. And the reason I have the Google camera app is that sometimes I do comparisons between the two camera apps, so I keep that installed here. But I primarily use the Graphene OS camera app on my owner profile. Clock and contacts, two more default apps. Cube ACR was the only call recording app I was able to find that worked well, so that's what I use. Again, I wouldn't personally recommend this app, it's just the only one I found that works. On to the next line, files, gallery, and messaging, just three default apps on the phone. So that brings us to Newpipe, which is an app you can watch YouTube on. So you may be wondering why it's on my burner profile and not my owner profile. As I mentioned, I have apps installed on here I'm trying to spend less time on, and I was watching way too much YouTube, so I moved it over here to make it a little bit more difficult to access to try and reduce my time watching YouTube videos. But other than that, Newpipe, great app. I highly suggest you use it. PDF Viewer, again, default app. Onto the next line, phone, default app, Play Store. Since I have Google Play services on here, that also means I have the Play Store installed. So that's what that's there for. Redo, again, I don't use Afteroid anymore, so I have Redo tracking the open source apps that I use, such as Newpipe on this profile. Settings, another default app. Signal, I have that installed on here to use with my burner profile number. So on the last line, I have the open source Twitter app. You might notice it's spelled differently. So again, that's on the second profile to reduce the amount of time I spend on there so I'm not just mindlessly refreshing, looking for new updates. So something you may have noticed, or maybe you didn't notice, but I don't have email on my personal device, and there's a couple of reasons for that. The first is that I don't want to mindlessly be looking for email updates, so I try to only check that a couple times a day on my personal desktop computer. And the second reason is that I think a lot of people undermine just how important email is to keep secure in terms of your threat model. If someone gets access to your email address, they can reset a lot of passwords on a lot of accounts. 
And at least in the US, if you call any financial institution and they need to validate you, a lot of times they just send a one-time code to your email address. So if someone has that, they can easily impersonate you. So I think not having that on a device that I'm carrying around all the time is just one more way to minimize my exposure. So I suppose one counter argument you could make to that point is I do have my password manager on my device. So if they did get access to my phone, they could use my password manager to then log into my email. But I still think that provides one extra layer of friction to them actually getting access to my email if I just had the account set up on my device. So I hope that sharing the apps that I have on my personal device was useful and maybe can give you some different insight or different ideas on what you can use as well. If you have any feedback or suggestions on alternate apps, feel free to leave those down below in the comments and I'll see you next time.